There are two kinds of futurists, those who don't know and those who know they don't know. The future has outsmarted even the smartest of us. Nobody has a crystal ball. Yet Peter Geldenhuis comes close. Years before it happened, he predicted we would see revolutionary products and services similar to Uber, Bitcoin, and WhatsApp. That's why he is known as a tour guide to the future. Today, he's gonna to share three predictions that he believes will change the world forever. We're at the cusp of an era that'll be defined by tumultuous change. Not only will we change our role in the world, we'll change our definition of ourselves as a human civilization. Out of all these wonderful technologies that are shaping the world around us, from communication to the revolution in genetics and biomedicine, one of the three things that I think will have the biggest impact on the world in the next three to four decades. The first one, I believe, is we'll become a type one civilization on the Kardashev scale. Now, Kardashev, a couple of years ago, defined a variety of civilizations based on how we harness energy. And a type one civilization would be a civilization, a planetary civilization, that'll be able to harness all of the energy that dissipates in its atmosphere from its local star. It's about 10 to the power of 17 watts. And that means that we are we're able, we'll very soon be able to reach that target in essence, using technology like ITER, the International Thermonuclear Experimental Reactor, with nuclear fusion might become a reality by 2035. And this means that very soon, in the next 20 years, we might just have free electricity. Take a look at vehicle manufacturing, where 60% of the cost of steel is related to the energy that you utilize. We believe that in the next two to three decades, Electricity will literally be free in the same way that bandwidth, storage space, and processing power is free today. What we're also seeing is that water shortage might be solved because with an abundance of energy, we can use water desalination. The second main idea is that we'll become masters of our own evolution. We are seeing huge advances in DNA to a point where you pay for approximately $150 and you can sequence your own DNA or a large part of it. Then you can store it on your own computer, see where you came from. Now, if you take a look at my genome, it looks like my four forefathers played around a bit, far more fun than I ever had. Uh, so I, I even have Native American blood in me and about 3% Khoisan blood. Very interesting to see what happened in my DNA. But I have my own DNA file on my computer. I can type in any genetic sequence and it will tell me if there's any mutations and how I should change my lifestyle. But very soon, we might be able to change that because of this person, Professor Jennifer Doubtner. She identified the Cas9 protein and utilizing the old CRISPR method, which is about 30 years old, we are able to edit our own genomes to make sure that mutation is taken out. The third major trend is really our idea around intelligence, our own intelligence as well as machine intelligence. We're seeing massive increases in machine intelligence where there's literally thousands of companies that are currently redefining how we look at the world and how we assess and analyze data. We're also seeing major changes in how we look at the world, products that you can buy off the shelf that'll enable you to write reports, to actually look at fraud detection in your company, to look at valuation of real estate, or even to have an assistant to help you with your email and calendar scheduling. The most important thing is that big data and artificial intelligence is already changing our lives. This fella, Michael Kuzinski, created a model to very accurately predict your personality profile based on your likes on Facebook. Or if you upload an article, it can actually give you an analysis of your personality. So that is a brief overview of my personality for the compliments of magicsource.com upload an article and get a personality profile. How do you use this to win an election? Let me show you. You see, in America, there are swing states. You focus on those. If you win the swing states, you win the election. And all you need to do is you see the ocean model at the bottom. Yeah, very interesting that, that they've mapped every single individual in the United States. On every single individual in the United States, they've got between four and 5,000 data points. That's the reality. And you can pinpoint exactly who is thinking in a specific way. So the moment you log onto the internet, that advertisement you see is aimed at your personality profile. So it's quite simple to win an election, really, because there are some that will go out and vote and some that won't. So you target those that will vote for your opposition and you target them with negative ads about your opponent. 
and they then say, you know, I was thinking of voting, but I'm not really going to. Where those that were thinking of voting, which would vote for you, you link directly to their personality profiles. Well, the American president used a company called Cambridge Analytica to do exactly that. Welcome to a world where everything is changing, where there's new technologies, new ways of doing business, and new ways of thinking. The future already happened. You just need to know where to look. Ladies and gentlemen, Peter Feldenes. Thank you. <laughs> Welcome. I've always been a little skeptical about futurists because uh, they don't have the greatest track record. What excites me about you is you've got a really great track record. I mean, you really have made some pretty compelling predictions. How do you do it? How do you see the future? Um, let me put the record straight. I was uh, on my way to Australia about four years ago, and I was at the Marina Bay Sands overlooking the beautiful harbor in, in Singapore. And uh, as I was walking back to the escalator, everyone was taking pictures of the bloody wall instead of the harbor. And I was wondering, why the hell are these people taking pictures of the wall? And then about two minutes later, it dawned on me they were taking selfies. So, um, <laughs> you know, I, I, I kind of missed selfies completely. I missed the revolution in self-driving cars. We predicted that for 2025, not for 2015. Mm. So we do make mistakes, get, mm. you know, and, mm. and that's the biggest thing. Making a prediction is easy because the future already happened. It's just unequally distributed. Um, huh. Getting the timing right, that's the problem. When you say it's already happened, are you saying you've actually seen the evidence and you're now just predicting the trend of that evidence? So most technologies that will define our future is already being created or the uh, platforms for them are being, uh, being laid. Uh, the, the problem is that we don't really know how society will react to it. So your big three are, wow, incredibly exciting. Free energy. I mean, that is surely going to change everything. Well, once the investment is paid off in electrical grids, in renewable energy, electricity is literally free. Hmm. Uh, yes, you pay for the distribution and the maintenance of the grid, but there's a massive drop in the pricing of energy and electricity, and we ought to see that in about 30 years from now. So uh, the trillion dollar nuclear plan that uh, our president and uh, well, Eskim have in pla place? You, uh, you, you need a stable you supply, but we do have a stable supply with our coal generation right now. The, the future is mainly aimed at looking at renewable energy and then spinning up gas turbines when you have certain peaks. So um, that becomes a far more sustainable model if you take a look at the, the, the predictive prices and where we're heading. Cyborgs, are we all going to be part computer? I guess we already are, right? I mean, your, 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 your phone is a supercomputer, right? And it's, and it's an extension of your own intelligence. Take a look at, at what's possible today. I can say, hmm, can someone please pick me up outside and take me to the airport? Uh, and I simply use a device in my hand, I press a button, I can do exactly the mm. same thing. Mm. Um, we're already becoming part of a cyborg society where we're all interconnected, but we connect to each other via these portable devices. In what way will these devices be embedded in us? Well, I, we, I spoke about blind individuals. They will have the ability to have overlaid, so you don't have to wear an AR helmet like the Microsoft HoloLens, that can be built into the bionic eye. So most people that are blind um, might be experiencing built-in internet before the rest of us. <laughs> um, and that, in essence, means we're already becoming cyborgs. Now, your next big prediction is, is, is us becoming masters of our own evolution, which happens with CRISPR, genetic engineering, uh, genetic editing. Already now, they've just gone into the first cancer trials with CRISPR and are predicting that this could be the cure for cancer. Would you go that far? Um, cancer is, 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 is a very difficult disease to manage. There's a variety of cancers. Um, the one way of doing it is to taking a person's DNA, then taking out the stealth mode of the cancer, growing that in a tobacco plant uh, for about four weeks, extracting their DNA. It's spliced with bacteria. Um, the and then after re-injecting it back in your body, the stealth mode is deactivated on the cancer cells. At that point in time, your white blood cells start recognizing that there's an invader, start attacking it because normally cancer hides from white blood cells. And while it morphs in order to attack this new invader, that morphing will enable it to start attacking the cancer cells as well. So in a way, cancer becomes a manageable disease, it's not cured. Okay, but what, what a, an irony that tobacco will be the cure for cancer, it's, right? It, it is a bit of irony. <laughs> is there anything we should be doing different now, given these predictions? Yes. 
get a copy of your DNA, analyze it, see what mutations you have in your DNA, and change your lifestyle if needed. You can hmm. do that tomorrow. You did that, right? I did it. What did uh, you find? So, so, well, I'm not going to give all of that away because um, <laughs> the insurance industries and the health industry would love to know. Um, Isn't that an implication, oh, by the way, that you go and, and get your day so and then you're, you're and, and suddenly uh, your medical uh, aid company doesn't want to... That is the future. We're looking at a future where everyone is a market of one. But um, I believe that your DNA should be private to the extent that you can protect it. Everyone is a market of one. In America, it's already a, a, a foregone conclusion. I, I said in my presentation that for each individual in America, I can track 4,000 data points. What car they drive, where they stay, what they like doing. If I take a look at their Facebook profiles, I can get a personality profile. And that's what large companies do. They, they say, listen, here's an advertisement. I want to target the following individuals with the, fall, with the following personality profiles. Mm -hmm. And you can target them directly, a market of one. Do you think Donald Trump wouldn't have won without that? I, I think it played a significant role in getting the swing votes and the votes that stayed away. That had a huge impact on him being elected. So Peter, coming back to what can we do now to make the most of these I, I believe that organizations will have to realize that the world is changing. TV channels is dead, we know that. We also know that artificial intelligence is on the horizon. <laughs> Not uh, CNBC Africa, not, though. No, because, because they, <laughs> CNBC can, Africa they can stream that, and news and sport will always be live. The near-term future will be defined by artificial intelligence. There's estimation that most industrial economies will close to double their GDP with the use of AI. And this means that most organizations need to get ahead of the curve. How can you use AI to make sure your marketing strategy is improved, your operations in your organization is improved, and so forth? The one key problem is most people think AI will be the cyborgs that will attack us or the Terminator which will end our jobs. Yes, it will change jobs, but rather see AI as electricity. In the past, I had a drill and I had to use it manually. And now I have electricity and that enables me to make a whole so much simpler. I mean, I love your optimistic view, but Klaus Schwab at the World Economic Forum a little bit earlier this year just defined described what the avalanche of unemployment that is about to hit us given the rise of AI. You don't agree? So take a look at history. If we take a look at all the contratif waves over the last couple of decades or centuries, we see that each new evolution and each new revolution in technology brings creative destruction. It mm -hmm. destroys jobs mm -hmm. and creates jobs. The, the car industry meant jobs were created, while those that reared cattle uh, and made ossovans, they, they didn't really continue in their, in their current jobs. It does mean that we need to adapt as humans. We might have to change more than we think we should. It's been a privilege to have you on Gurus. Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you.